Hey, precious people, how are you doing? I go by the name Sassy. Now, Sassy stands for Save the Soul, says Yasmin. And I'm very delighted to be here today in Geneva on Inspire TV and to bring you today's session of Words of Hope. You know, words are very, very important, especially God's words. Jesus said something. Jesus said that his words are spirit in their life, meaning his words contain within it the power and the capacity to transform you. His words are, you know, he said something. He said he said that I am that I am, you know, and his words encap encapsulates who he is. His words are words of life to people who feel like there's no hope. His words are a balm of Gilead to people who are wounded or who are bruised. He's everything that you need him to be at a particular point in time. I just want to encourage you to just, for the next 10 minutes or so, to be very, very focused, even as these words that have the power to change your life come to you. So let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Father, Lord, we understand that we are nothing without you, O oh God. Father, you are both our source and our solution, O oh God. Father, even as I speak, Lord, I know my weaknesses, O oh God. But I thank you that you use the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, O oh God. Father, Lord, may you speak, O oh Lord, and minister to every heart, O oh God. I pray that each and every word that I speak, O oh God, will not fall on the ground, but it will go forward to accomplish that which it was sent for. In Jesus' mighty name have I prayed with so much faith and thanksgiving. Amen. So today's 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 session, I, I I captioned it for this reason you were made manifest. For this reason you were made manifest. So we're basically going to be talking about purpose. So when we talk about purpose, I just want to first talk about Jesus. You know, Jesus was a man on a mission, and he was somebody who clearly defined his mission. So what did Jesus say in John chapter ten verse ten? He says, "The thief came to steal, to kill, and to destroy, but I came." That you would have life and you would have it more abundantly. You know, in, in another in another portion of the New Testament, he also said, he said, for this reason, he was made manifest to destroy the works of the enemy. And today, I just want to ask you this rhetorical question, just a question that you would reflect on. For which reason were you made manifest? You didn't just show up on earth because you showed up. You were created by God. He said in his word that he, before you were your, in your mother's womb, he knew you. So you are here not to exist, but you are here to live. You are here to actually be a solution to a question that God knew was going to be asked in your generation. So I really want us to delve into that today. So we're going to just use um, as our anchor passage the story of the prodigal son. And it's, it's from Luke chapter 15, verse 11 to 32 onwards. So I guess we're all probably familiar with this story, but just for the people who don't know, let me just go over it. So basically... Here was this guy, there were two sons with a wealthy father, and then the younger one one day decided that he wanted to disconnect from his father, he wanted to do life on his own terms. So he asked for his half of the estate, and so then he went about you know, trying to do life. But then the problem was that he completely made a mess of his life. He disconnected from his father, and he completely made a huge mess out of his life. To the point where he went through an identity crisis, he forgot who he was, and he didn't understand who he was. To the point where he was actually contemplating eating the the, the, the food of pigs, you know. But then my favorite part of the story is when he has the epiphany in verse 17 and he says that, he said, look, even the hired servants at home had better to eat than this. I can just return home, go to my father and ask him to be a servant. And that was the moment where he decided to do a comeback, you know. And Basically, I feel like sometimes we live beneath our calling like the prodigal son. We have been called to so much more. We have so many resources that God has made available for us. But then unfortunately, we're not aware of who we are. We have an identity crisis and then we start to live beneath our calling. So another person who almost missed out on her calling was Esther. Now, Esther was this young orphan girl who had gone into the king's palace. But then the problem with Esther was that she almost got distracted in the palace. God had given her her access and the grace and her giftings for a reason. You know, but she almost got distracted in the palace. She had been called to be more than a beauty, beauty queen. You know, the beauty queen bit was just a disguise. It was just something that was giving her access to what she was actually called to be, which was a deliverer. She was called to collaborate with God to deliver his people from annihilation. That was her true purpose. But she almost missed out on it. But then Bodekaya sent her a reminder. He said, hey, you know what? 
don't think that because you're chilling here in the palace, you're going to be spared when when this wrath comes upon God's people. But who knows that you have been put in a place like this for a time such as this? And that is what I want all of us to think about today. Who knows that you have been placed where you have been placed for a time such as this? You know, God is... It's, it is the end times and God is pulling out all his plugs in all the pillars of society, in education, in politics, in business, in health, you name it, entertainment. God is raising up his generals to represent him and to bring his kingdom here on earth. What is your position? I want to encourage you today to make sure that you maximize your potential. I want to encourage you to, today to ensure that you don't get distracted in the palace. You have been placed here for a time such as this. There is a reason why God placed you here. He knew that there was a question somebody was going to ask in this generation and that is why he placed you there and he placed a solution in you. God is inviting you today to collaborate with him to bring his will here on earth. Would you accept it? One of my favorite my favorite poems is one that was in this movie, Aquila and the Bee. And it says, our deepest fear is not that we're inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we're powerful beyond measure. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, talented, or gorgeous? Actually, who are you not to be? We were made to make manifest the glory of God inside us. And even as we make our own light shine, we unconsciously give others the permission to do the same. For all you know, your obedience to the call of God upon your life is tied to the destiny of people. Esther was called to be a deliverer, but she had been disguised as a beauty queen. I don't know what you've been called to be today, but I know that God has called you to a place of collaboration with him. And I know that God has invested in you resources. He has put something in your hand. Moses was showed up before God and he was making up excuses. And God said, you know what? What do you have in your hand? It was a stuff. But that was what was going to give him access. That was what was going to, it, was, it, it looked like an ordinary staff, but that staff became an instrument for miracles. God has placed something in you. God has placed gifts in you. God has placed talents in you. God has empowered you with grace. He said that he has given us all things that pertain unto a godly living, meaning that he has given you everything to actually live and walk out life in victory. So what are you waiting for? I just want us to say a short prayer even before I wrap up. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, O oh Lord, for every single person listening today, O oh God, that is listening by a phone, listening by a tablet, that is however it is they are connected today. Father, I thank you for their lives, O oh God, that is, I pray in the name of Jesus that no gift in them will remain idle, O oh God. I pray for an activation of every gift in them, O oh God, that is, I thank you that your body is about to rise up, O oh God, that is, your body is about to represent you with excellence, O oh God, that is, Lord, the light has dawned on them and everybody is arising and taking up their position in the name of Jesus, oh God. That in Lord, God forbid that somebody that you have called to be royalty, oh God, is going to is going to is going to live life rolling with the pigs, oh God. You have called us from that place, oh God, and you are calling us into a place of reigning with you, a place of ruling with you, that in a place of glory, Lord Jesus. So I thank you, oh Lord Jesus, that each and everybody, Lord Jesus, is going to come up to their full calling and maximize their potential. In Jesus' mighty name, have we prayed with so much faith and thanksgiving. Amen. So I leave you with this. For this reason, you were made manifest. Thank you so much for joining us. God bless you. The name is Sassy. The program is Inspire TV. The segment is Words of Hope. God bless you.